Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can fake a room mic. It's not the best solution, uh, but I give you four options for an almost good solution. I had a request for this on the Facebook page, and I thought it was a cool idea. And it's something I've done before with sort of okay results, but I came up with four different ways of doing it. I think uh, one of these will get the job done. Let's start off with listening to this beat that I've set up. It's just dry drums. There's no reverb, there's no effects on it, nothing. So here we go. Obviously it's not a real drum kit. And for the room mic, I'm only going to do the kick and the snare. Those are the most important things to have in your room mics. Here's the first attempt at making this effect. It sounds like this with the drums. And this is based on using a reverb. And I've done this track with just the Reaper plugins, especially with the reverb, it's probably not the best idea. I didn't experiment too much with other uh, reverbs, but I think you can get something that's passable in this situation. So this track is fed by the kick and the snare mic. And what's weird about setting up the reverb this way is that you don't have it at 100% wet. I have the dry at zero and then the wet at plus four. The actual signal chain goes through this weird EQ that's kind of simulating like what I would want to get out of a room mic. You kind of dip the high frequencies because it's further away from the drum kit. You're not going to get as much crispness of the snare. You want the hi-hat and stuff like that to be out of the way. And then there's a little bump and a roll off in the low end. And right in the middle at 500 hertz is a almost 6 dB cut. So that's kind of how I would pre-process a uh, room mic. So I'm kind of doing that with the raw tracks. So they go into the reverb sounding kind of like how they're supposed to. So the reverb is at 58% room size, uh, quite a lot of damping. The stereo width is only about half as wide as it could be. I found it to be a little more natural sounding. Uh, if it's at 100%, there's sort of an obvious delay on one side. I didn't want that. Uh, 21 millisecond initial delay. So that's delaying the reverb signal from the dry signal. I just kind of played around with that, with the idea that that is setting the distance from the, the original mics. 21 milliseconds is pretty long. You have to be careful not to run into phase issues because we're mixing this in with the dry drums. It's not its own unique uh, sound. So it's a lot easier when you have a real mic in a real room. And then some compression, uh, and this is fairly gentle, I guess. So here's how it sounds soloed. Here it is without the compression. It's just kind of evening out the uh, kick and the snare volumes and without the EQ. And all together again with the drums. And without. That's round one. Round two is using Easy Drummer and just programming in the kick and the snare in the, as a MIDI item. What's important here is that all the mics are turned down except for the ambient mic. I could have just pressed solo, but basically we're only hearing the ambient mics of the recording of this drum kit. It's not the same drum kit, but when blended in, it sounds pretty good. And you also have the option of blending in the kick and the snare from Easy Drummer. And that gives you a lot more flexibility. There are a lot of drums that come with this, and there are so many expansions for this. I just really quickly programmed it in. This is a simple beat for a full song with fills and everything. It'd be a lot more complex. Um, but if you're just doing those hard hits with a, uh, the room mics, I think this is a decent way of doing it. So here's Easy Drummer with just the ambient mic soloed. And to me, that sounds a lot 
more like a real mic in the room. Next up is using Stephen Slate's Trigger 2, just running some of the room mics. So this is the snare. And there's a kick. Let's solo this. With the original tracks. Another really easy way of doing this, you're just sending audio from the kick and snare tracks into Slate's Trigger or any other drum trigger program, load up just room mics, and then blend them into taste. And the last one is kind of weird, I have to admit. It's using Amplitube just for this room section of the, uh, of the interface. So nothing in the stomps. Uh, the amp section is bypassed. In the cab, I've selected a bass cabinet, but the actual microphones are turned off, so we're not hearing the dry signal from the cabinet. We're going through this uh, room mic simulation, and uh, we can adjust the width, we can adjust the level. I think this is at, this is at minus five. And there's a few different um, kind of room types that we can select. So here it is soloed. And that's Studio A, here's the big live room. So it, it still kind of sounds like a reverb, but it's, it's not really too bad. And we can choose a different cabinet as well. opens up a lot of different possibilities for um, processing. I've EQ'd it already for this bass cabinet. Without this EQ, I was finding it had a really weird resonance. And with it, just kind of mellows it out. And let's hear that in the mix. Taking it out. So there you go, four different ways of faking a room mic from sample drums. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Hope it gives you some ideas and what you can do with um, processing your drum tracks. Really the best option is to just maybe take off that hi-hat mic, make it a room mic, put it facing away from the drums in a small room. Um, there's so many things you can do with room mics and they're so helpful in the mix. And they're way easier to work with than trying to fake it. So. Next time, just use a, a room mic. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the website with a Patreon donation. Check out reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. See you guys.